I tell you this morning that there is a form of godliness that is present in our world today. And that this form of godliness, it stands in opposition of the Lord. All right. All right. In his second letter to Timothy, All right. Paul wrote about the perilous times of the last days. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we'll see that he stated that people will become lovers of themselves, yes, yes. that they will be lovers of money, along with being despisers of good, mm-hmm. while having a form of godliness yes. as well. Yes. Now, depending on the kind of godliness of someone, All right. godliness can either be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Amen. Yes. Now, true godliness, we would consider as being dedicated and being devoted to righteous living. Yes. Yes. Now, let us understand here today that in order for us to live righteously, we know this already. All right. We know that we have to live by the way of Christ. Yes, sir. Now, as you know, God is righteous. Mm-hmm. As you know, he alone is righteous. There is nothing, there is nobody else Mm -hmm. that is righteous but him. The only way that you and I could ever be righteous is through him, our faith in him. Now, unfortunately, we are certainly living at a time where people are lovers of themselves. All right. Now, what I mean by this is that we are living at a time where people are overly selfish yes. and yes. they are overly stuck in their own way. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. So they rather stay in their way mm-hmm. rather than become lovers of the way of Christ. Yes, yes. So in their self-love, we find that many people that they glorify and that they esteem themselves above the Lord in their own self-imposed righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I tell you again today that there is a battle taking place in our world and that battle is now taking place between man and between God himself. Some of us are at war with the Lord Lord because of our mindset Mm -hmm. and because of the manner in which we live our lives. I point this out to you today because I want to keep all of you Mm -hmm. from being at war with God. I want to keep every last one of you from being at war with the Lord because I know the end results of being at war with God. Yes, sir. Do you know the end results of being Uh at war with the Lord today? My dad, he once said in a sermon many, many years ago, Mm -hmm. he said that our arms are too short to box with God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell you today that being at war with the Lord. Mm -hmm trying to fight against God, Mm -hmm. I tell you, it is a losing battle. Yes, sir. Here in the book of Exodus today, we are told of two men who went to war with God. Mm -hmm. Both of these men, I want you to know, were kings of Egypt. In other words, they were pharaohs. Yes, yes. Now, if you happen to turn over to the very first chapter of Exodus, you'll see that in the opening chapter of Exodus, we are told of the first Pharaoh that stood in opposition against the Lord. This Pharaoh, we are told that he did not know Joseph. Now, what was important about this is that you recall that Joseph, when he was sold into bondage by his brothers, that Joseph, he ended up rising up and having a very prominent position in yeah. Egypt yeah. under the previous Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Yet this Pharaoh, he came along and he did not know Joseph. And right. he looked at Joseph's people. He looked at the children of Israel mm-hmm. 
and he considered their growth. Yeah. And we'll notice in the first chapter of Exodus that this Pharaoh, he began to worry about the children of Israel. That's right. Yeah. He worried that they would grow mighty and that they would become a problem for Egypt. That's right. Yeah. And because of this worry, mm -hmm. we see in scripture that he and the Egyptians, they chose to deal shrewdly with the children of Israel. Yeah. And that they ended up putting the children of Israel in bondage. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. This was the first Pharaoh that we read of in Exodus. This was his opposition against the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, let us remember this about the Egyptians before we go any further here yeah. today. The Egyptians were, and they still are, considered to have been a very advanced civilization. All right. Not only did they have great advancements, but they also had at that time a very mighty army. Mm -hmm. And so what this meant is that we could consider that they were a great power at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know that the pharaohs as kings of Egypt, mm -hmm. we know that they were rulers over that great advanced civilization. All right. So this gave the kings of Egypt, this gave the, the pharaohs a a sense of great authority. This gave them a sense of great power. Mm -hmm. This was their godliness, if you will. Yeah. Now we're told in scripture that time passed in the second chapter of Exodus. Uh -huh. And we're told that this first Pharaoh, we're told that he died. Yeah. And so another became Pharaoh. That's right. And this other that became Pharaoh, he reigned in Egypt and he reigned over all of those that resided in Egypt. All right. By the time we are told of Moses's first confrontation with this Pharaoh, mm -hmm. we get a clear sense of how this man viewed himself. All right. In the fifth chapter of Exodus, in the first and the second verse in the fifth chapter of Exodus, we'll mm -hmm. see that Moses and Aaron, they went and they stood before this man. All right. And they said to this man, they said, thus says the Lord God of Israel. All right. So what I want you to know right there is that Moses and Aaron, they were not speaking of their own accord. They were speaking on behalf of God. Yeah. Yeah. They said, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. Mm-hmm. This is a command from God to Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. We'll see that Pharaoh had a response to Moses and Aaron. Therefore, he had a response to the Lord. Mm -hmm. His response was, who is the Lord? All right. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. He said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice mm -hmm. to let Israel go? Wow. He did say, I do not know the Lord. Yes, sir. Nor will I let Israel go. Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh, I want you to understand, he did not recognize. He did not acknowledge God. All right. Yes. This means that he did not recognize God's authority. Mm -hmm. He did not recognize or acknowledge God's power. This was a man who in his mind had a great amount of authority and power. In his mind, there was nobody that could tell him what to do. All right. All right. Especially not the God of a people mm -hmm. who he had control of <laughs> who he had in bondage. Yeah. This was a man who in his authority and in his power mm -hmm. felt that he was a God. Milo. This man was filled with his pride and he was driven by his ego. And again, he was driven by his authority. And again, I tell you today that this was his form of godliness. All right. 
All right. And I began to wonder about us today mm. because all of us, we have this sense of authority over our lives. We have this sense of power over our lives. We have this sense of control over ourselves. All right. And I began to wonder, is this our form of godliness? Are you driven by your pride? Are you driven by your ego? All right. Are you driven by your sense of power? Are you driven by your sense of authority? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I tell you today that it certainly feels like many of us are driven by our pride, our ego, and our sense of power and authority to the point that there are times in our lives where we will ask, who is God? Yeah. Who is the Lord? Mm -hmm. We have our technological advancements. We have our wealth. We have our houses. We have our cars, our clothes, and we have our wisdom. Yes, yes. In our minds, we are at the top of the chain in this world. Yes, sir. There is nothing that is like us, mankind. Mm Mm-hmm. Who is the Lord? Why do we need him in our life is what we'll ask. What I want you to understand here today is that such pride and ego is what puts us at odds with God. All right. Tell us, son. I believe this to be true for both believer and non-believer. All right. There are believers who get to a point to where they began to think that they don't need God. We are above that thought today. All don't right. sit here and think that you are. All right. We as believers have to make sure we always check our pride and our ego at the door before the Lord. Mm-hmm. Do you hear me here today? Mm-hmm. David said, though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Yeah. I tell you today, put your pride and ego in check before the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in his pride and in his ego, Pharaoh, I want you to understand here today, he had no fear of disobeying a direct command that came from God. I want you to hear here today that this man, he was open to, in his disregard of the Lord. Yeah. This is certainly not a good thing here to be open in a manner of disregard of the Lord and the command that came from him. And we'll see that this caused him and all of Egypt to be at war with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now let's look at what it's like to be at war with God here today. All right. We are shown From the seventh chapter of Exodus to the ninth chapter of Exodus, you can read that at your own time. Mm -hmm. We're shown that God struck him and all of Egypt with plague after plague. Yeah, yeah. Water was turned to blood. Mm -hmm. There were plagues of frogs, of lice, flies. Mm -hmm. There was a plague against the livestock. Yeah, yeah. There was a plague of boils as well. Mm -hmm. All of these plagues, they they caused much suffering in the land. All right. All right. And we'll see in scripture that Pharaoh, his magicians, Mm -hmm. and that all of the great advancements that they had, you'll see that they were unable to withstand God and, and his salvo of plagues. All right. They were not only unable to withstand the Lord, they were unable to combat him as well. Mm -hmm. Being at war with the Lord. This is very interesting because we today, we rely on our great advancements, don't we? We think very highly of our great advancements, don't we? We think that these advancements, we think that they make us great. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, we'll see in scripture that after each plague, we're told that Pharaoh could only do one thing. All right. Pharaoh could only harden his heart in anger and in frustration. Mm -hmm. 
That's that was the only thing that he could do. Right. After every plague, if you see it in scripture, mm-hmm. you see that all he could do was harden his heart. There was nothing else that he could do against the Lord. Mm-hmm. My Lord. You see, I believe that this was his only response because he had begun to realize he was fighting a battle. He was fighting a war That's right. that it was impossible for him to win. I believe he began to realize that. All right. Yeah, his pride and his ego, his sense of power and his sense of authority that he had grown used to having over all people, Mm -hmm. it could not let him do what was obvious. And what was obvious, I want you to know here, was that he needed to humble himself. Yeah, yeah. He needed to humble himself before the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he could not humble himself because he had raised himself to be above the Lord in his godliness and his pride and his ego would not allow him. It would not let him see his power to God. He did not want to lose this war, even though he began to realize this was a war that he was not going to win. Yes, yes. I tell you, that's insanity, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the purpose of the plagues was to get this man who believed he was a God to acknowledge the Lord. Mm -hmm. Was to acknowledge the Lord, to acknowledge his power, to acknowledge his authority as well. All right. This would mean that Pharaoh would need to let go of his pride. He would need to let go of his ego. This would mean again that Pharaoh would need to humble himself. Yes, yes. I tell you, it is hard for, for man. It was hard for Pharaoh. It is hard for us today to learn to let go of our pride, to let go of our ego. All right. It is hard for many people to humble themselves before the Lord. Again, we don't want to cede our power, our authority. We don't want to cede our sense of control. Yes. I truly do believe humbling ourselves is one of the most difficult things it is for us to do. That's right. Because power, it means so much to us. Yet I tell you today that God is the one who is in control. God is the only one who is in control. God is the one who has all of the power and who has all of the authority over not only us and this world, but over all of creation. God is the one who created all that we know and all that we do not know. God is the sovereign. God is the one with the authority. God is the one with the power. Only he has it. Yeah. Trying to combat the Lord's power and authority, I want you to understand today, it is futile. Mm -hmm. It is pointless. And this is a lesson that Pharaoh needed to learn. And I tell you today that this is a lesson that many of us need to learn as well today. Many of us are combating the Lord. And I tell you today that it is futile for us to be doing that. By the time we get to the text of my key verse here in the ninth chapter of Exodus, we'll see that we are now in the seventh plague. Mm -hmm. All right. And we'll see that God was increasing the might of the plagues. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was doing this because Pharaoh was not relenting in his heart. Yeah. And what I want you to understand here today is that's where the battle was actually taking place Mm -hmm. in the heart of Pharaoh. That's where the battle takes place today between God and man Mm -hmm. in the heart of man. And again, I want you to understand when I'm talking about the heart of man, I'm not talking about the one that's inside of our chest. (laughs) I'm talking about the mind. I'm talking about the spirit. Yes. That is where the battle takes place. Mm -hmm. God seeks for us. God seeks for mankind to acknowledge him in our hearts today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
as you have heard me say before, our confession must be made in our heart and not just by our mouths. Paul stated, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, Paul said, you will be saved. Again, notice what Paul said. He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, but he also said, and if you believe in your heart, confession with the mouth is not enough. It is what goes on in your spirit. Yes, sir. Pharaoh needed to relent in his heart. And many of us need to relent in our heart today as well. The Lord through Moses said in the 16th verse in my key verse today, said to Pharaoh, for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power. Yeah. That's God speaking there. And he's speaking again to Pharaoh. Say, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. So again, the Lord was seeking for Pharaoh to acknowledge him, Mm -hmm. but not only was God seeking for Pharaoh to acknowledge him, we'll see here that the Lord was also seeking for the world to acknowledge him as well. God was seeking for the world to recognize that he and that he alone is the one true authority and the one true power. Yeah, all right. What I want you to know here today mm-hmm. is at that point in time, God was putting mankind on notice. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you hear me here today? Mm-hmm. God was putting mankind on notice. Yes. All those centuries ago, the Lord was putting mankind in his place. Yes. Right. Do you hear me here today? Yeah. Yeah. God wanted mankind to know that you are not God. That's right. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Many of us get around here thinking that we some kind of God. The Lord said centuries ago, you ain't me. Right All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Here we are today, 2021. All right. Look at us, mm-hmm. mankind. We still move about in this world today with few of us recognizing the Lord, with few of us acknowledging God, mm-hmm. with few of us doing these things in our hearts today. All right. Again, we ask the question, who is God? Mm-hmm. Why do I need him in my life? Yes. 2021. Mm. Many of us today, we openly mock the Lord and have absolutely no fear mm-hmm. of what he can do to us for being in opposition against him. Yeah. Many of us have absolutely no fear of what God can do to us for the trespasses that we commit against him. Oh, yeah. I believe that there are many times in our lives when God reaches out to us Mm -hmm. to either get our attention or to put us on notice. All right. Yes. Yes. Yet many of us, like Pharaoh, will harden our hearts and will pay very little to no attention to God trying to get our attention or the Lord putting us on notice. We'll tilt our heads in the air and we'll just keep on going by our business. All right. Why do we do this? We do this because some of us, just like Pharaoh, we have put ourselves above the Lord. Yeah. And we feel that we have little need to acknowledge the Lord. We feel that we have little need Mm -hmm. to pay God any attention. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that some of us truly have no fear of the Lord. And I tell you, that actually scares me. For someone not to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're then told in scripture here in the ninth chapter of Exodus, 
we are then told that prior to the plague of hell, we'll see there in the 19th verse, we'll see that God actually gave a warning to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He gives a warning to Pharaoh about the upcoming plague. Yeah. We'll see that the Lord warned, he said, send now and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field for the hell shall come down on every man and every animal which is found in the field and is not brought home. Mm -hmm. The Lord warns and they shall die. Oh, yeah. Let's notice that even though Pharaoh was standing in opposition mm -hmm. against God, even though Pharaoh was at war with the Lord, even though Pharaoh was combating God in his heart, let us notice that God was still giving him an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. God was still giving Pharaoh an opportunity mm -hmm. to get out of the war. All right. Because the Lord certainly knew that he already had the victory. Yes, sir. He was giving Pharaoh a chance. Mm -hmm. Second chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though many of us stand in opposition against the Lord today, mm -hmm. I want you to know that he gives us a chance. Yes, yes, sir. He has still given us an opportunity yes. to get off the battlefield against him. <laughs> Tell it, son. Tell it. Mm -hmm. He has given us an opportunity to leave the battle against him. And not only has he done that, mm -hmm. he has reached out his hand and said, join my side. Yes, yes. God has, in the midst of the battle, paused for a moment and said, stand with me. Yes, Lord. Tell it, son. Will your pride and ego allow you to stop combating the Lord in your heart? Will your pride and ego allow you to stand on his side? All right. All right. Now we look back here at this scripture today. Mm-hmm. And we'll see that Pharaoh had a choice here with this warning. Yes, Lord. What would Pharaoh choose to do? Mm -hmm. Would he heed the warning? All right. Or would he continue to combat the Lord in this war that he knew it was impossible for him to win? Right on. Yeah. And we're told in the 20th verse here, we're told something very interesting. Mm -hmm. We're told here in the 20th verse that his own servants... Pharaoh's own servants, All right. they heard the word of God. We're told that they fear the word of God. I hope you see that there. All right. And we are shown that they heeded the Lord's warning. All right. They brought their livestock in. They got in. They took shelter. Mm -hmm. You see, what I believe had happened here is after the opening salvo of plagues that came from the Lord, I believe that those servants had come to a place in their heart where they knew what God was capable of doing. Yeah, yeah, all right. Some of Pharaoh's own servants, I want you to understand, they became God-fearing. All right. They realized what God could do, and they thought better of following after the word of Pharaoh, and they said, let me heed the word of God today. Yeah, yeah. All right. What this meant is that they actually recognized the Lord's power. They recognized his authority. Mm -hmm. And we're told in the book of Proverbs that, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. If you fear the Lord, you are being wise. <laughs> yeah. It is the beginning of knowledge. That is what Solomon said. Uh -huh. But on the flip side of that, Solomon said, yet yeah, fools despise wisdom and knowledge. Yes, Lord. <laughs> so we're shown here in the ninth chapter of Exodus that some of the servants of Pharaoh, mm -hmm. we're told that some of them heeded the warning of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yet, on the flip side, <laughs> like the proverb said, All right. some were foolish. Yeah. Some were foolish, mm -hmm. and they disregarded God's warning. All right. Yeah. 
They disregarded the Lord's warning. They followed after Pharaoh. They did not fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. They had not learned from the first few plagues that the Lord had plagued them with. All right. And they still chose to be foolish. Yes, yes, Lord. Now, what do you suppose became of those that did not fear the Lord that day? What do you suppose happened to all those that did not heed the warning? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see from the 22nd through the 25th verse there. We'll see that the hell came. Yeah. We are told that the heavy hell came and that it was mingled with fire. Mm -hmm. And we're told that it struck the land and all of the people and all the beasts that was in the land of Egypt. Yeah. They touched Goshen. All right. It hit all of the land of Egypt and all of those that chose to stay with Pharaoh, all of those that chose not to heed the warning, mm -hmm. they died. Yes. Yes, Lord. This plague, I want you to understand, it was awful. Mm -hmm. It was terrifying, this plague was. Yes. This plague was so terrifying that we'll even see there in the 27th verse, we'll even see Pharaoh, for a very brief moment here, we'll see that he relented. Mm -hmm. This man who was so stuck up in his, his pride and in his ego, his authority and his power, his sense of godliness, mm -hmm. We'll see that even for a brief moment, we'll see that he relented and that he acknowledged his sin. Yeah. And that he said that the Lord is righteous. Mm -hmm. Now we would think that that's a good thing, right? All right. But I want you to understand here, I want you to note something as well. That from the 28th through the 35th verse, we'll see that while he relented in this brief moment, we'll see that it didn't last long. Right. It didn't last long because he didn't let go of his ego. He didn't let go of his pride. He didn't let go of his sense of power and his sense of authority. Mm -hmm. He didn't let go of his form of godliness. All right. In other words, this man, he did not humble himself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He did not relent nor did he truly humble himself in his heart. All right. We're told that Pharaoh, he hardened his heart again mm -hmm. after Moses entreated the Lord and the hell stopped. Yeah. It angered him. Yeah. It frustrated him mm -hmm. that God had this kind of authority, yeah. that God had this kind of power, and that Moses was working on behalf of him. <laughs> it angered Pharaoh. Yeah. Pharaoh knew that he didn't have this, this, this kind of authority, mm -hmm. this kind of power, and it angered and it frustrated him. Mm -hmm. There are many people who in our world today, they know that God is God, yes, sir. but they can't let go of their ego and their pride. They can't humble themselves. They see the power that God has. Mm -hmm. They see how the Lord blesses you today. And it angers and it frustrates them because the Lord blesses you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It upsets them. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh, he would go on to suffer greatly in this war with God. Mm -hmm. As we know, his son died in the plague of the firstborns, yes. along with many other Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And it's truly a tragedy that yeah. Pharaoh was that way. Mm -hmm. Because this war was over before it even began. Yeah, yeah. This war was over before it even started because who can stand against God? No. Who can stand against the Lord? No. Had Pharaoh simply acknowledged God the first time around, mm -hmm. he nor the people of Egypt, they wouldn't have had to suffer anything. Had he simply acknowledged the Lord the first time around and freed the children of Israel, there would have been no suffering. All right. I speak to you today, uh, Pharaoh, and the lesson that we can learn from him, because I believe that there are a great many Pharaohs that are living in our land today. Yeah. 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 Now, some will take that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand here, I don't say that as a compliment. All right. 
I don't say that as a compliment to say that there are many kings and many queens that are living in our world today. Mm-hmm. Now, I suppose that we will think of ourselves as kings and as queens. And, and I suppose there's nothing wrong with thinking of yourself as a king. I suppose there's nothing wrong with thinking your, of yourself as a queen. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that there is a line that you cannot cross. Mm-hmm. I believe that there is a point that we can't not cross. That point is when we are challenging the Lord's power and authority in our form of godliness. Yeah, yeah. Again, I ask the question here today, who are we to challenge the Lord's power and authority? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I speak of Pharaoh today because there are so many of us who have absolutely no fear of the Lord today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Many of us, we live our lives with no concern for how the Lord looks at us. Many of us, we live our lives today with no concern for how the Lord is going to judge us for how we have lived in this world today. Many of us, we live our lives with no concern with how God is going to respond to the actions that we have taken yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Oddly enough, some of us fear other people mm-hmm. like Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. We fear other people more than we fear God. <laughs> yes, sir. Some are more afraid of others because of the color of their skin. Mm-hmm. Some are more afraid of others because they are a woman mm-hmm. and because they can think for themselves. Mm-hmm. And because they can't lord over and they can't rule over the woman and the decisions that she chooses to make for herself. Yes, yes, yes. There are so many people in our world today who fear others because of the absolute nonsense and foolishness mm-hmm. that they have come up with in their own head or have heard from others who are foolish as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tell you today that we ought to fear the Lord and his judgment. Oh, yeah. We ought to fear God more than we fear man. Mm-hmm. As scripture tells us, every knee will bow to the Lord and every tongue will confess to him. Mm-hmm. You see, one day we shall all give an account of ourselves to the Lord. And I tell you that there is no escaping this. Mm -hmm. One day you will have to stand before the Lord. Mm -hmm. God is going to look you up and he's going to look you down. (laughs) He's going to look at your spirit and God is going to judge Mm -hmm. your actions. You are going to confess with your own mouth. The actions that you have taken in your life. Mm -hmm. Will you fear how the Lord is going to look at you? Will you fear how God is going to judge your actions? Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to judge us for all of our actions in this life that we have lived. So I say to you today that it will be better if you live your life in a manner in which you fear him. It would be better if you live your lives today in a manner in which you fear the end results of God's judgment of you rather than mock his judgment by constantly, diligently living in opposition Mm -hmm. in that war with him. You see, a God fearing person, I tell you today, is one who, again, shows acknowledgement of the Lord. But I also want to point this out to you as well. Because they feared the Lord and because they feared the Lord's judgment, the God fearing person Mm -hmm. shows devotion to wanting to please the Lord in how they live. Mm -hmm. Do you fear the Lord to the point that you fear how God is going to judge you and you devote your life to pleasing him Mm -hmm. in the manner in which you live? I certainly hope that you do this. Scripture proclaims to us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. The him being God says it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe 
that he is. That means you must acknowledge him and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I tell you today that you ought to live your life in a manner in which you desire to please the Lord, not openly disregard his way. The Lord is a reward of those who cast away their pride those who cast away their ego. Yeah. God is a rewarder to all those who will humble themselves. Mm-hmm. All of those who will fear him. Mm-hmm. All of those who will devote their way mm-hmm. to pleasing him. Mm-hmm. Who are we to not let go of our pride and our ego mm-hmm. and humble ourselves before our creator? Yeah. 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 Who are we to not be humble before him who gave his only begotten son to us Mm -hmm. to die for us so that we may have salvation over sin, salvation over the world, salvation over ourselves, salvation over the devil himself. You see, I tell you today that there is nothing wrong with being a God fearing believer. There is absolutely everything wrong when you choose not to fear the Lord. There is nobody who is beyond the Lord. Mm -hmm. Every man, woman, boy, and girl is in need of him. Satan once thought that he was beyond needing God and he was thrown out of heaven. Mm -hmm. So I tell you today to prevent you from being thrown out of heaven. I tell you today that you should fear the Lord. (laughs) You should fear his final judgment of who you are as a being. Mm -hmm. And you ought to live your life in a manner that is pleasing to him. If you feel yourself becoming overly prideful, I tell you today to resist your pride, to humble yourself, to humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. And I tell you in due time, God will exalt you. Amen. 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 Amen.